So the first three months of this year were heavy mindset months for me. I think that's an excellent way to start the year. Very often we want to start and we want to jump right in with those goals without having really developed the mindset and the habits that we need in order to sustain those goals throughout the year. So one of the things that I really concentrated on was my faith because as I would have shared in previous videos, this this year, my word of the year is flourish and the F in flourish is for faith. So flourish is an acronym and this is actually the first time that my word of the year is so expansive. Usually I just have one word and that guides me throughout my entire year. But this one word flourish through my time journaling and having that one-on-one -on -one time with myself remember i say those three daily appointments appointment with god appointment with yourself and then your appointment with others during my appointment with myself is where this flourish framework came up so i really encourage you spend that time with yourself spend that quiet time with yourself getting to know what do i want what do i need what do I need in this season? What do I need coming out of the last season to prepare myself for the next? This is the thing that we don't talk about. We make the vision boards. We make the list, right? We get excited about the new thing. But what do you need? What do you need to actually strategically, successfully take the steps that are going to take you toward your vision. You're only going to know that if you are sitting with yourself. Would you need guidance? Possibly. Would you need help? Definitely. But you do the work. You spend time with you. You get to know you. I really want to encourage you to do that. And this is something that as women, I think we don't often do because we like we like being surrounded by people who love us and adore us and affirm us. But remember that that is not always helpful because other people don't always see where you're going. Other people don't always see your vision and they may be loving and affirming and adoring a version of you that actually needs to die in order that a new version of you can live, in order that a new version of you can come to life and flourish okay so i know that is for someone in here and if it's for you just put a little lady emoji so i know like this video if it's helping you that gives me feedback and it lets me know that what i'm saying is actually reaching you that it's encouraging you and that it's helpful so back to the flourish framework i knew that faith was something that i really needed for this year i knew in my spirit that this year is going to be a big year for me personally right i'm not talking about business i'm not talking about family i'm not talking about anything else i know that i am entering a new phase in my life i'm i'm gonna be 49 this year next year i'm gonna be 50 and in my journaling back to the journaling in my journaling this is why it's so important i was able to look back look years back and see patterns in my life i saw a big change when i turned 30. i saw a big change when i turned 40. and i know that there is going to be a big change when i turn 50. i'm looking at the rest of my life and you may think oh my gosh i'm turning 50 i'm getting so old i feel like my life is just beginning I feel like I'm finally becoming the woman who I was created to be and it's exciting and it's exhilarating. This is how I want you to feel. This is how I want you to feel about your life. This is how I want you to be the visionary of your life, not looking around at your circumstances, but keeping your eye on your vision, keeping your eye on the woman who you are right now and the woman that you're becoming and loving every single step of your journey keeping your eyes open in every single step of your journey being fully aware not only of yourself where you are going but also what's going on around you when you start to become a visionary woman it's not just about keeping your eye on the goal it's not just about being focused on achieving these 10 things and checking all the boxes it's also about who you're becoming and it's loving her it's loving her whether she wins or whether she learns a lesson. 
because I don't believe that we actually fail. We fail when we refuse to learn and that is a choice. But when you choose to be fully present and you choose to fully embrace every single aspect of your life and you choose to be intentional and you choose to be insightful in your approach to life, you will always win. You will always win. So we're going into April. I am closing out this month inside Her Victorious Vision, and that is my online program. It's an ongoing program. You'll have, uh, you'll have access. I was about to say something else. You'll have access to it for an entire year. So the women who are already enrolled, this is what I'm going to be releasing for them for us rather because I'm going through it myself and I had to go through it myself. And when I say go through it, I went through it this month. This month has been, I cannot describe to you. It felt, and I'm almost getting emotional. No, I am getting emotional. It felt like in some areas that all hell broke loose in my life. And the reason that I was able to still show up is because I sat with my journal every single day and I squeezed every ounce of revelation. The R in flourish is for revelation. So I'm intentional about pulling the revelation out of every single day. I'm intentional about pulling the revelation out of every single interaction in my life so that the wisdom that I need, the strategy that I need, the S in flourish is for strategy, is, go is going to manifest itself in my life. When you pay attention, the strategy will reveal itself. Sometimes we're trying to figure out what am I going to do? What do I need to do to make this happen? It's not about what you need to do very often. It's about what you need to see, vision, vision. It's not just about slapping a vision board on the wall. It's about how you see your life, right? Your perception, it's about having a higher level of perception. And I'm thinking about the eagle and I'm thinking about how high eagles soar. And I know people talk about this all the time. Eagles soar high and they soar high about their problems and they carry their prey way up because the prey can't breathe at a certain level. This is how we have to live. This is how we have to live. We're looking for that elevation. That elevation happens through evolution. The evolution, and I'm not talking about caveman evolution. Your evolution is when you keep flapping your wings. Your evolution is when you keep going higher and you get stronger when you choose to go higher. But the crazy thing is that people don't understand very often is that if we would just be still and we would choose to go deeper we choose to sit with ourselves. We choose to sit with God. Remember those three daily appointments, the appointment with God and the appointment with yourself has to come before your appointment with others. Or you're gonna find yourself flapping your wings and feeling like, no, I'm flying too high. Let me, let me come down. Let me come down. I'm flying too high. I can't handle this. Because you have not empowered yourself while you're on the ground so to speak, you have not empowered yourself in order to soar high, right? It's not about showing up for everyone else. It's not about showing up for validation. It's not about showing up for approval. It's not about showing up for affirmation from others because we can do that. We can do that. And if we sit, that's why it's important to sit with your journal. I'll give you journaling prompts. I give you journaling prompts. One of the first things that I ask women to go through is the A-list assignment. And when I talk about the A-list, it's you putting yourself back at the forefront of your life where you belong. Too often we put ourselves last. We put ourselves last because we think it's noble. And there are times when, yes, you have to put yourself last. But remember, you are the only person who's living your life. And if you can't take care of you, how are you going to take care of others? 
How are you going to take care of your family, your relationships, your job? How are you going to take care of those things if you aren't taking care of yourself? And when I talk about taking care of yourself, I'm not talking about skincare. I'm not talking about getting your nails done. I'm talking about taking care of your mind. I'm talking about taking care of your heart, taking care of your soul, your spirit, the woman within. She needs your help. She needs your love. She needs your attention. So I'm inviting you to come back, come back to yourself so that when you do show up in the world, you're showing up as the empowered, beautiful, courageous, capable woman that you are called to be. All right. So I let you in a little bit. I wanted to talk about that because this is this is my real life example of what I'm doing. I come on here and I share things. This is what I'm actually doing in my life. This is what I've learned. This is what I've learned. This is why I can have peace. This is why I'm not falling apart because trust me, if you knew everything that was happening in my life, right now you would wonder how is she doing it and this is what i learned over 10 years those of you who may or may not have seen my testimony on youtube or on instagram i will actually link the instagram video below because that's the first one that i shared so i will link that in the description and you can watch that if you are interested in learning my testimony but i'll give it to you in a nutshell i basically had my period just go crazy between 2011 and 2021. So I went from bleeding for eight days a week, which is already a lot, and I had heavy bleeding, to by July 2021, I was bleeding for three weeks straight, 21 days straight, okay? I had no break in my period. And during that entire time, this is something I had no control over. No doctors could diagnose it. No one could tell me what was going on with me. And I really retreated into myself because I had to keep my mind right. I had to keep my mind right. Um, being married, having children. Yes, I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. I was not working at all. No, I did work for one year during that time period so I thank God that I had the provision and I had the opportunity to be able to be at home and have the time to dedicate to to myself right but I'll be honest most of those years I did not dedicate time to myself most of those years I spent serving my family and that's not a bad thing it's not that there's anything wrong with that but I was not paying attention to myself I threw myself into serving other people because what was going on with me and the fact that I had no diagnosis the fact that I was running out of hope in that situation I threw myself into everything else I threw myself into the areas where I was getting feedback and everyone was telling me I was wonderful, that I was a great mom, that I was a great wife, and I was seeking that validation from that because the rest of what was happening with me seemed hopeless. And your situation may not be like mine, but there may be this hopeless thing that's looming over you and you're throwing yourself into another area because that's the area where you are getting the, the good feels, right? Fast forward, the whole world shuts down and I am no longer needed to do the the running up and down and the to and fro and the driving children to school and the doing all these things. Supermarkets are, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the places are closed, right? So I'm home so much more and life has slowed down so much and I'm forced to deal with myself. And I had a moment where a friend of mine said you should fast you should go on a fast and you should pray because she said what is happening to you is not natural it's spiritual and it's so crazy because i consider myself a deeply spiritual person but i never thought of it that way i never saw it that way and this is why perspective is so important to your vision and this is why it's important to surround yourself with people who are going to speak life into you and who are going to challenge you. And she really challenged my faith. So I did go on a fast. And when I tell you, I prayed some of the most honest 
prayers that I have ever prayed in my entire life. And I knew something shifted inside me. What was happening inside me physically did not change. I actually enrolled in a coaching program. This would be in, I took a challenge with Patrice Washington in July of that year. And then in August, I, or was it in, did everything happen in August? No, I think everything happened in August. And then I enrolled in the coaching program and I graduated from that coaching program in November. Between July and November, I wrote the vision. I wrote the vision and when I say I wrote the vision, I had already been writing my own personal vision and I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. And by the time I graduated from that coaching program, I had already coached myself and I didn't even realize that that's what I was doing. And this is what I now share with other women. My, my journal launched as an ebook on October 21st, 2021, and that was my birthday. That was my 46th birthday, October 21st, 2021. And on October 22nd, 2021, the bleeding stopped. And it has never come back. Well, no, I take that back. It did come back. But my faith, the level of faith that I had, the one day, I saw blood and something within me panicked and the Holy Spirit within me rose up over that panic and I went into the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I looked at my face and I pointed to myself and I said, you are healed. You are healed. By the end of that day, by the end of that day, I had stopped bleeding. Now this may go over some of your heads. This may seem crazy, but you have to have faith in your vision. Your faith is more real than what the reality of life is showing you. Your faith is more real than what the reality of life is showing you. I have seen this in my own life. I'm not speaking encouraging words. I'm not trying to make you feel good. I mean, I, I am trying to make you feel good, but I'm telling you the truth, not my truth, not my perspective. I went back to my doctor and she said to me, you know, the usual questions, when was your last period? And I told her, and it had been a while since I had seen her. And she was like, what? I said, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a period. She examined me you know, did whatever she needed to do. She said, well, everything looks fine. Everything looks normal. She's like, but this is early because I was only 46 at the time when I stopped bleeding. That's early for menopause. But I don't consider myself being in menopause. I just consider myself a woman who doesn't have a period. <laughs> um, I have seen a miracle in my own life right? Going from bleeding that heavily to not bleeding at all, it didn't taper off at all. And the fact that it happened the day after I launched this book, I knew that that was part of my healing. It was a part of my visionary journey and it was a part of my flourishing journey. The vision is just the beginning. The vision is what leads you to flourish and flourishing doesn't always look like something showy and something flashy. When we think about flourishing, we may think about what people see, but there is a flourishing that happens within a woman who has done the work. And if nothing else, this is what I want to encourage women to do, to do the work, do the work that it takes to live out the other side of this vision board. All these words and the pictures, this is my other side of my vision. All these words and the pictures and the, the wishes and the hopes and the dreams, you get to live on the other side of that. And that's the point of all this, 
right? What's the point of the vision board party? What's the point of the prayers and, and the, the effort that you're putting forward if you're not going to live on the other side? And if you're not going to prepare yourself because you have to prepare yourself. There are things that you are wishing and hoping and dreaming for that you are not prepared to receive. Becoming the woman who is prepared to receive that. Have you ever seen a woman being presented with a gift or being proposed to? And she's like, oh my gosh, no, no. And I know that in the moment, in the excitement, that, that may be an initial response, but there are some women who feel, I don't deserve this. And I have been on the receiving end of gifts and felt unworthy. And we should never feel unworthy. Surprised, yes, but never unworthy. God wants to bless you. And the blessing isn't sometimes the actual thing, it's the vision. Your blessing is in your vision and it's in seeing yourself worthy of receiving and living in what you dream. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I am walking into April. I was just about to write my vision for April, my personal vision for April. This is a new quarter and this is a new season that we are in. And so I'm writing down the things that I am going to be concentrating on in April. And it's going to seem very superficial, but the last three months have been really deep on a spiritual and a soul level. I have gone so deep and I feel like I want the outward me to reflect what the inner me feels like. I call it like my John the Baptist season. I feel like I was talking to some friends the other day and I said, I feel like I'm coming out of my John the Baptist season. So I want to do my hair and I want to um, wear makeup and I want to do mani pedis and I want to reorganize my house and declutter and clean and decorate and create. I have a, I can't turn this around right now, but I have an easel on the other side of my office. And there is a picture of Bob Marley that I paint, I drew, sorry, in 1996 or 97 when I was in college and when I was an art student. And it's the only drawing that I have left from that time in my life. And that's a part of me that I have neglected. So my creative side, I definitely want to bring out. And I made an outfit. I made a dress in February when I went out to an event with my husband. And I literally sat and made the dress and then went and took a shower, put the dress on and left the house. And I love doing that. I love creating my own clothes. I like wearing my own style, like my own personal style. So that's something that I am definitely excited for in April. So that's my vision for April. If you have made it this far into the video, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I just wanted to share with you what's going on with me and kind of wrap up the month, wrap up the quarter really of what it's looked like in this season. And I'm really looking forward to the next. So in April, I'm going to be sharing the A-list assignment. So look forward to that. Look forward to videos about the A-list assignment. What does the A-list assignment mean? And I've shared the first five parts of the A-list assignment before, and I'll be sharing more and in more in depth going forward, but I will put a link with the free access to her Victorious Vision. And there you'll get a teaching on the A-list assignment and you'll also be able to download a free PDF. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link and you'll be able to download and access that free information. 
inside of her victorious vision tomorrow night that's good friday we are going to be looking at the resurrected woman and i really feel led i was gonna do this for one night but i really feel led to go through it for three nights and really go in depth so if you are interested in being a part of her victorious vision the link is always in my description so i will invite you right now to go ahead and be a part of that that is not free <laughs> there is a fee associated with that so you can choose to pay over the year and save or you can choose monthly payments it is up to you we would be meeting monthly i would release a message monthly i call it a message because i don't want to necessarily call it a teaching but it's a time where you can see me one-on-one -on -one. i can walk through things with you i can talk through things with you and if you want to take it further and you want to meet with me privately, there are opportunities for you to do that inside Her Victorious Vision. And I really wanted to make that possible because not everyone can afford the one-on-one -on -one visionary intensive partnership. And I understand that. And I want to create a way that those women who are willing to invest in themselves on some level would be able to do that. So if you are one of those women, I encourage you to become a part of Her Victorious Vision. So I'm going to get back to my journaling. I'm going to get back to my writing. My house is actually empty right now and I am savoring this time. My husband took the children and I am home alone. So I get to have extended one-on-one -on -one time with myself and whenever i can do this i really treasure it that's my neighbor's dog he he just is how he is <laughs> but thank you so much for spending this time with me if you are still here um i want to see those who stay till the end so give me a what are we gonna use a pen Put a pen in your comment, a pen, right? So I know that you stayed till the end. I hope this helps. I really hope this helps. I really do. Blessings on your journey. I'll talk to you soon.